Good afternoon again, everyone. Uh, I'm Elia Aguilar, and I'll be I'll be your host this afternoon. Committee Management Unit Head of the NILD's Hub of Innovation for Inclusion, or HiFi, and my co-host for this afternoon. I am Katie Borja from the Benildian Student Envoys. Once again, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. So, all right, to, to start, uh, I'd like to introduce um, and welcome Benild Hub of Innovation for Inclusions, or HiFi's new director. Let's all welcome uh, Sir Nico. Yeah. Today, this afternoon, we are very lucky you know, to have two speakers who will guide us through um, through our conversations with regards to sensitivity and empathy. So this afternoon, we have Dr. Therese Puskos, a faculty member of uh, and former dean of the College of Education at the University of the Philippines in Diliman, and also Mr. Mark TQ and Pequeño, um, who is you know part of the HiFi family as well. Um, he is now uh, you know service design and customer experience specialist at Sun Life. You know? So without further ado, I would like to um, pass on um, this time to our host and our speaker so that we can go on with the program and learn as much as we can so that we can build together a more inclusive and innovative society. Maraming salamat po. Let us all welcome Dr. Bustas. Magandang hapan po sa inyong lahat. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this forum. You know, with every invitation, it's like an adventure. So when they gave me the topic sensitivity, so it was time again to look at my inventory of experiences as well as things that I have read and learned about sensitivity. Okay, so the topic that was given me is sensitivity. So when it was given to me, I really didn't know what to do. I mean, you know, I accepted the invitation because it was premised on another talk that I gave. Uh, I think it was on kindness. And uh, the instruction given was, well, to talk about uh, sensitivity in relation to diversity and not just to focus on disability. Because definitely, diversity includes many things. Now, we're different in many uh, areas and ability is one of them, but it's not the only one. And so when they asked me to talk about topic, of course, the first recourse was to go to the dictionary and to look at the meaning of sensitivity. You know, the word sensitive is not exactly a very positive word. In fact, if we use it, when we use it, ang sensitive mo naman. Eh di syempre, no? you know, that's negative already. Um, and then sometimes we talk about it in relation to sensi having sensitive skin and reacting um, reacting to certain substances. Uh, so sensitive again. And then, and so I guess the best definition would be the letter E definition that you're seeing before you, which is awareness of the needs and emotions of others. Okay, so I decided, okay, I'm going to stick with that definition. And I remembered again, so what exactly was I, was I supposed to talk about? And so we talk about sensitivity in many areas. You hear talks about gender sensitivity, cultural sensitivity, and of course, my field, now, disability sensitivity. You will also find materials on moral sensitivity. And you know, I thought that if I only had 20 minutes, so what should I talk about to make sure that I'm able to cover all of them? And so here's what I figured. Okay, take a look at the slide. What can you see? Could you type in the chat box what you are reading in front of you? So please indicate in the chat box the message that's being presented before you now. So listen first. Actually, when I first saw this um, particular logo, it's actually the logo of the Listen First or um, .org uh, in the, the US. So it's a nonprofit in the US that is focusing really on listening. And I'll tell you more about that organization later. But why is listening very important? And listening 
in relation to sensitivity. So let's hear and let's look at what William or Bill Urey had to say about it. When you listen to someone, it's the most profound act of human respect. You know, when we do sensitivity training among our staff, among our students, the underlying reason for doing that is that we want to be able to treat each other with respect. And if you were to really focus on respecting people, then listening, deeply listening to someone is one way that we can show each other respect. Now, William Urey is a professor at the Harvard Program on Negotiation. So he's a negotiator between countries more often in countries that are in conflict and even in companies that are in conflict with each other. So he's a chief negotiator for many of these uh, companies and countries. And so, so what is ordinary listening as against genuine listening? So if listening is the most profound act of respect, that we can do, then we need to be able to distinguish the usual listening that we do and genuine listening. Now, ordinary listening typically focuses on ourselves. On when I ordinarily listen, I just focus on myself. But when I genuinely listen to someone, then I focus on that other person. And let me explain this further. Stephen Covey uh, had this to say about listening. Uh, so this is his observation of people. Most people do not listen with the intent to understand, but they listen with the intent to reply. So typically, like, you know, because I'm teaching a tertiary level class in special education, when I give a question, uh, students would be uh, so busy, you know, trying to find an answer. And when you start discussing as a class, instead of really listening to what their classmates were saying, they tend to just focus on my question, the question that I asked, and they're focusing on the answer that they're supposed to give. And they don't really listen really to what has been said or shared by the classmate. More often than not, they end up saying the same thing, duplicating the same thing, because they have not been really listening to what has been said. Rather, they were more concerned with how they were going to reply to me as their, their professor. Oftentimes, we see ourselves in this particular situation. More than listening to the question and the reason why a question is being asked, we begin to to focus on how we're going to answer the question. So if it's uh, if the person is presenting an argument, we're getting ready with a counter argument. But genuine listening, genuine listening means that we listen to understand. We listen to understand, not really listen so that we can have a sensible reply. And so, again, that organization called Listen First has these four key principles about a good Listen First conversation. Now, let me talk about what Listen First is. You know how divided the U.S. is at the moment. And so there's this particular NGO that really advocates and um, gets people to be involved in this movement called Listen First. So in fact, later on, we will look at the pledge of members. But there are four important principles. Number one, we listen first to understand. Not to reply, but to understand. To know the, what the person is saying. To know what the person is not saying. Because the person is telling you something, even if the person doesn't really talk about it. So what is he or she talking about? What is he or she not talking about? 
what do you think are the intentions behind those words that are said? What are the feelings? What are the needs that may not may or may not be communicated? So we want to understand where that other person is coming from. And then number two, let's be curious and be open to learning. I mean, there is always something new that we could learn. And I realized, and this was back in the day where we could still do face-to-face -face and we could commute. You know, there are some people that you ride with, sometimes the driver of the grab car or the taxi driver or sometimes some, someone you sit beside with in the jeepney. And there are just many things that you could learn from them, from your seatmates. So it's good, always good to be curious and to be open to what people have to say. You know, no one has the corner on knowledge. All of us have something unique to share. And well, of course, and that's a good thing. Third one, there are many things that we would hear um, that may not really sit well with us. But the suggestion, the key principle, number three, is to suspend judgment and to extend grace. So that means we just take what's being said for what it is. Um, instead of cutting a person short because of what is being said, because we don't agree with what is being said, part of listening first is suspending judgment. And then lastly, we benefit from having many diverse perspectives. And so we try to maximize that to the extent possible because again, many ideas, you know, it's always good to listen to people. But then some people say, no, it's hard to listen. It's hard to listen. I myself find it hard to listen. In fact, if you want me to fall asleep, just um, I would turn on a lecture video and that will make me sleep. So I hope I'm not making you sleep right now. But, but why is it so hard to listen? Why is it so hard to genuinely listen? And so this is the same question that um, other scientists, research, uh, social scientists would ask. Now, why is it so hard? For us to listen. You know, I've been reading a book of Amy Cuddy and also checking out the book of William Bill Urey. And they say that it does have something to do with power relations. That maybe some of us, that the demonstration of power is being, being the first one to talk, being the first one to speak, the one with the loudest voice is most powerful and so when you choose to be quiet is it does it mean that we're giving up our power now amy cuddy so another social scientist who works with the business sector um i think she's more popular in relation to the power poses i don't know if you have watched a ted talk uh by amy cuddy well, anyway, she's more associated with the power poses. Um, you may have heard already that your body has a power, the power to shape your mind you know, and not really the other way around that your mind shaping your body. And so she said, and she would advise, you know, like students, um, new professors applying for a job or yeah, new graduates applying for a job. And sometimes when you feel um, not very confident that you would use your power poses, you know, like Wonder Woman. So try to remember Wonder Woman pose, that's a power pose. Because the power pose would be poses that are where you expand. But then the not powerful poses would be those poses that make you um, make your make yourself small. Like you know, you close. Uh, you tend to um, cross your arms and you make yourself small. So a power pose makes yourself big. Yeah. And so this is the research of Amy Gaddy. And so she was researching about, and her book was entitled Presence. 
And so, but she talked about listening in relation to power, or at least feeling confident, you know, feeling confident and comfortable to share your thoughts, your ideas, etc. And look at what she said about listening. The paradox of listening is that by relinquishing power, and what is relinquished, the temporary power of speaking, asserting, and knowing, we become powerful. So the paradox of listening is that by relinquishing power, by, the, by temporarily suspending their power to speak, assert, and to know, we, you, become more powerful. And she explains this further. So why, are, why do you become more powerful by listening? So, and this is what she says. When you listen, people get a sense that they can trust you. Yeah. So it's not just your agenda, you talking about your plans and your vision, etc. But when you just stop, keep quiet, and listen to what people say, you end up really, or at least you are perceived to be more trustworthy than someone who can keep his or her mouth shut. When you listen, and again, because you're actively listening, you acquire useful information. When you're in a negotiation, you know, whatever is said by the other party, the, any information that they share is something that's very important. It helps you understand the situation and it can even help you strategize. Third one, when we listen to people, we, there's a possibility that we will be perceived as allies more than an enemy, more than a, like, you know, a competitor. We get to understand people because listening is a very important part of connecting with each other. So next, by listening, we are able to develop solutions and hopefully, the solutions that are born out of listening to what they are saying, these solutions will be more acceptable to them when you present them those solutions. And then lastly, she says that when people feel heard, then they are more willing to listen to you. And that is what she means, that you end up becoming more powerful and, and I'm not saying that you become more powerful to lord it over them. No, no. You're more powerful because when you speak, when it's your time to speak, then they will listen. Okay? And so going back to William Urey, Bill Urey, and this is what he said, you know, again, so he works with uh, countries. He worked with dictators. He worked with... Um, uh, huge multinational companies. And this is what he has to say about listening. So when you're undergoing a, when you do a negotiation, sometimes you do have to concede. So you give uh, another person, you make the other party win in a way. But you need to look at listening as the cheapest, and this is what he says. I'll just read what he said. Listening may be the cheapest concession that we can make in a negotiation. Listening costs us nothing, but it gives us huge benefits, especially if you're negotiating. So you're not being asked to pay an amount. You're not, they're not asking you anything. But listening, listening is a form of concession which will not hurt you. And so listening, as he said, may be the golden key that opens the door to human relationship. Listening is so important. And if we are to be sensitive, and um, if we are to really tap on people's sensitivities, uh, and I'm saying that in a more positive way, uh, then we need to be able to listen. But many times, it's hard to listen. It's really hard. It's not easy to listen. And as I've said, when you're trying to ready 
all the counter arguments in your head. Or maybe you're not even trying to ready your counter arguments. Maybe you're just too busy. You've been given so many projects to work on, so many deadlines. Not only do you have deadlines over at work, you also have personal issues. You have your family to think about, plus you have COVID to think about. And it is so possible that our heads are just so full of things that they prevent us from listening, from, from genuinely listening. And so in this case, my suggestion is that we really have to create a headspace. We need to create some space in our heads for listening. That means needing and wanting and intentionally being quiet at times. You know, many times we see ourselves on Zoom, you know, we attend meetings. After the meetings, then we have our classes also on Zoom. And then it's the same um, cell phone, it's the same laptop that you use also for entertainment purposes. And sometimes, I don't know if, like me, you also feel fed up already. We just have been spending so much uh, time before our gadgets, before our devices. And sometimes we would just have to switch off, switch them off. And we switch them off intentionally because we want to create space, space so that we can listen, space so that we can hear and we can be more aware of the needs of others. But making space for listening requires that we take care of ourselves. There's a tendency, and I found, because it's very difficult to have work-life balance when you're doing work from home, that you, people would have to be very intentional, even in the way they care for themselves. Um, you need to put it in your schedule. Like having enough time to sleep, having enough time to eat, and not just eating in between meetings or eating while having a meeting. And sometimes you, you just can't believe it when uh, one ear is on a one Zoom meeting and another ear is on another. You know, that's one way of making ourselves. Um, be ready to crash. So let's take care of ourselves. Let's take care of ourselves. Let's take care of ourselves so we have so that we would have the energy, we would have the time to really listen, to genuinely listen. And so let me share with you a personal experience, you know, as I was thinking of my own personal inventory of uh, um, how did I learn to listen? So, um, so I think some of you know that my master's degree is in reading education. So my master's is in reading and I was very fortunate to be one of the last batches um, to be taught by Professor Basilisa Manhit. Professor Manhit is a known terror. Terror. As in street. And, um, but she's also a very passionate person, you know, passionate about reading, passionate about literature. And, and this is what she did each time we had classes. Um, look at the two yellow arrows. So... So you have one arrow here and another there. She would begin asking us about what we thought about what we read, the assignment. So if she begins at this point here where you have this first arrow pointing down. So for example, that person is Anna. Okay, Anna. Anna, so, so tell me about the article that you read. And then what she would do is to go to person number two. Okay, add to what 
Anna said. And that that was the same pattern for person three, person four, person five, person six, person seven. Can you imagine how person seven felt? Um, and so when you would sit in her class, that was EDR 210, you'd, sometimes you're afraid to sit at, at the end of the row because there's a possibility that you would be the last. And there's also the possibility that you would be first. And so we would tend to sit here, second, hoping that this would be the first or somewhere here in the middle. But Professor Manghit, you know, as a professor now myself, I know she wasn't just testing what we remembered from our readings. What she was really teaching us was to listen to what each other was saying and to add, to respond to what that person was saying. But our interpretation of the task was, oh Lord, I need to show her that I understood the reading, that I'm smart enough to understand that reading, that I did my homework. And so instead of listening to each other, the tendency was to pour over our notes while we were waiting for our turn. Later on in that course, we finally figured that it wasn't really that. It wasn't preparing a reply to a question, but really being able to listen to what was said by your classmate, adding to what was being said, putting your own ideas, and then um, interacting with the ideas that you have heard before, and the next person will do it. Dr. Manhit, no, not Dr. Manhit, Professor Manhit, taught me how to listen. She taught me how to listen the hard way because I, I thought that it, was, that it was just ordinary listening. And I thought it was just plain terrorism uh, during the initial weeks of the class. But eventually, we understood that she was teaching us that we need to listen. So Professor Manhit, okay, is known for her article to teach is to love. So there's an article. I believe it appeared in the Education Quarterly, an old publication of the UP College of Education. So the picture there, of course, the older professor, that's Professor Manhit, but she has long gone home. Um, but this is what she said about teaching. To teach is to love. It's to share something precious, something we value and hold dear. It may be knowledge that broadens our understanding of people and things. It may be a skill. It may be an attitude of mind that nourishes our being. And in my case, Doc, uh, Professor Manhit taught me how to listen, taught me how to listen. And again, it wasn't perfect listening initially. It was more like listening to protect myself, listening to get a good grade, at least a passing grade, because we knew that she was so strict. But eventually, and looking back, I would have to thank Professor Manhit for teaching me how to listen. And so I go back to this slide. Um, this is, okay, the one on the left hand corner is the logo of the Listen First project. And as I've said, America is so divided. And so there is this movement that's really pushing for people to start listening. And what, what struck me when they presented figures about the toxic situation that was going on there, they were saying that people hated other groups of people without even knowing anything about that other set of people. In among their circles, they don't have or they've not encountered people who represented the other side. And yet they felt so much hatred over such people. Can you imagine 
hating something that you don't even understand. And you even see this on the internet. You see this in the comments, he, even here in the Philippines. Pag makasagot, pag makakomment, akala mo na intindihan kung sino yung nagpost at kung ano yung pinost. And so, this particular movement, there is a sign sheet, but we don't have to sign there. That's their issue, not ours. But there's a sign sheet. And the sign sheet goes like this. I pledge to listen, and I will listen first to understand. And look at this particular um, slide. I hope you're able to see the sentence below this one. Each person who listens first to understand tips the scales from division and contempt towards connection and understanding. And so I appeal to you, and I hope that if there is anything that you will remember from this talk, listen first to understand. If you have any questions regarding this presentation, you may email me at this address. And thank you again for your time. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you so much, Dr. Bustos. Ang ganda nun. Listen first. Thank you so much for sharing with us how important it really is to genuinely listen. Ayun, ang keyword natin, genuine. Genuinely listen to the people that we interact with, not just to reply, but to all understand them. Okay. Salamat ulit, Dr. Bustos. Now, to introduce our next speaker, let me call on Ms. Ina Bernabe, also from BSE. Thank you, Katie. So our second speaker, who will share his expertise in empathy, it is all welcome, Mr. Total Quality, Sir TQ. Hello, magandang hapon. Buhay pa yung total quality na yun. So, wait, let me share my screen, ha? Sige lang, Sir TQ. Welcome po, welcome. Yeah. Salamat po. And salamat. Salamat. Po, yeah. So, yan. While Sir TQ is setting up, again, I'd like to remind everyone, if you have questions, uh, just put them in, in our chat box and uh, we'll get to them later. Yan. Sige. Okay. Sige. So, uh, first, uh, hello. So, magandang uh, po uh, sa lahat na nandito. Uh, thank you for, well, first of all, signing up, no? Thank you to HiFi and CIE, of course, for organizing this event. So as mentioned, no, I'm TQ. So uh, a quick introduction. No? So I am an instructional designer, uh, pro professional trainer, and an enter experienced designer. Pero I think today, this afternoon, I'm here now. Not I don't want to be a subject matter expert as I speak to you uh, today. But uh, I want to be a person like everyone who has a story worth uh, hearing. Okay, so we're talking about empathy. So, ano nga ba tong empathy na to? So, maybe I can ask, uh, I can ask people to like chat in the chat box. Sa tingin, an aning definition of empathy or what definition are you familiar with sa empathy? Okay. Ano bang ba empathy sa inyo? Okay. Putting yourself in the other people's shoes, perfect. Actually, yan din yung nakalagay. So I think we're all on the same page. No, we're all aligned. So I guess thank you for listening. Jemai, back to you. Na, hindi pa naman. I think yun din kasasabihin ko eh. So, well, the, the, the classical definition of empathy, as we know, is yan, putting people or pe putting ourselves in the shoes of others or feeling how they feel. So what tagalized, di ba, we call it like pakikiramay. Um, pakikiramay, on the other hand, means the following. Uh, first, yung maki or paki, meaning uh, a request for action. Okay? Pakikuha nga yung pinggan, pakihugas nga itong pinggan, pakilagyan nga ng dishwashing liquid yung panghugas ng pinggan. So, puro panghugas ng pinggan kasi yun ang ginagawa ko ngayon, all working from home. And, uh, and ramay or damay, which is like taking, taking part of. Okay? So, pakikiramay, if we translate it directly to Filipino, is to share or take part of. We often use the word pakikiramay to express sharing pain with someone, but uh, how do we develop the ability to empathize or paano tayo makikiramay? Well, before we get there, 
um, do you know who this character is? Okay. I see some faces. No, ikilala ko yan. Ikilala ko yan. May nag-chat ba? Okay, let me check. Yes, that sadness. Yes, yes, correct. That sadness from the movie, from the series crashing, Crash Landing on You. De, biro lang. So that's uh, that sadness from the movie Inside Out. So I want to open my sharing today with this. No? So this concept of empathy, of pakikiramay, reminds me of the movie Inside Out. Papaano? How so? So for the uninitiated, the movie is a coming-of-age story about a human girl, si Riley. So they just moved to a new environment. Okay? They just moved homes. So the twist here is that uh, in the, the movie's point of view is mainly the back end, no? Sa likod, uh, of Riley's experience and behavior. So this is done by they, they personified uh, like five core emotions that uh, they deemed, no? the writers deemed na pwede maging building blocks of other emotions. So we have the yellow one to joy, the red one to anger, the green one to disgust. Ayan. And then si purple one, si fear. And then we have the blue one, si sadness. So uh, these five emotions, parang dyan nagagaro yung movie, how they interact each other with each other and how their interactions basically shape how Riley behaves in the outside world. Okay? So now, spoilers ahead. So at the start of the movie, when Riley was just a young child, it was Joy who was leading the group. Okay? It was a time when Riley was always playing, making friends, and basically enjoying her little life. But uh, when Riley moved houses, she moved in a new and uncomfortable environment. And the leadership among the emotions went haywire. The five were trying to take the wheel to steer Riley towards the appropriate emotional direction. But, uh, well, Riley was a twin, a tweener. And just like other twins, like us, we wear mga cologne na mataas ang alcohol content, and then uh, we wear Axe body spray. And uh, these tweeners, siyempre, they, they went towards uh, Teen Axe. So a little storylines later, after the different emotions brought havoc to Riley's emotions, Riley felt a deep sadness. So what, what essentially happened was sadness was now driving Riley's ship. Okay? And as much to everyone's surprise, if you can recall the movie, she was the best driver for this part of Riley's journey. Sadness allowed Riley to weather her storm. Now, what's interesting is that okay, what's interesting is that there's a portion in the movie wherein nag-zoom in dun sa dun naman sa emotions ng mga parents. And you, you know who was driving the the was driving mom was sadness. And I think this is much more of my interpretation, okay? much more of my interpretation, but as we, as we age, as we grow, sadness becomes or matures into something else. Sadness matures into, into empathy. It is my interpretation of the movie, and this is not <laughs> an interpretation uh, activity of the movie, but I, I guess that it illustrates my point that uh, this, is shared, this, this sharing of empathy or this, uh, this sharing of pain, okay? empathy happens when we are able to mirror other people's pains. Okay? And uh, we are able to take part of what's hurting them. So Therese Wiseman, a well-suffixed doctor, and dami niya, and, uh, mainly a, but she's mainly a professor of applied health in cancer care. She's often quoted on her four elements of empathy, okay? which are, first is perspective taking, which means seeing the world through their eyes. Second is withholding judgment, appreciating them as human beings. So I think si Teach Kanina mentioned about withholding judgment and listen first. So it connects uh, quite well. Third is recognizing other people's emotions. It's when, when we understand their feelings. And then when we last communicate understanding, when we show or tell them that you understand their feelings. Now, this afternoon, what I'm going to do is tell you four stories of how these four elements applied to my life. And mind you, these are stories of failures, not successes. And I hope that through my failures, uh, you can mirror <laughs> the, 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 the pain, the emotions, experiences that I went through. First, 
let's talk about perspective taking. When I was young, I took an empathic systematic thinking test. And then, well, I scored below average on empathy and above average on systematic thinking. I also took a DISC personality test and get a dominant control result. A long time ago, I also took a Myers-Briggs personality test and got an INFJ, which means I'm an introvert, I'm intuitive, I'm feeling, and I'm, yes, I'm judging. So yes, as mentioned, this is not a series of success stories on empathy. Yeah. Now, in 2012, I was juggling two jobs. I was teaching with Benilde for my day job, and I was also the team lead of the design team of a property company. By then, I've been with Benilde for over a year, and with a property, with a property company, I was the new hire. So basically, I was juggling two. I was juggling two roles. I came to job very early, six thirty, as office na ako, so I can leave by four p.m. so I can teach in Benilde. My team were more tenured than me. May iba five years sa company. Some were older, some were younger, and uh, they enjoyed playing Call of Duty during break and during downtimes, and they loved to eat lunch together. Eat lunch together. But uh, I didn't join them because I can't. I had another job to do. Yeah. Uh, I had to finish my tasks so I can leave for my next job. It was a systematic schedule I devised that worked well for me. Every week, I would ask for task updates and make kulit yung teammates ko. Kukulitin ko sila, kamusta na yung project, but may delay. Uh, I was more of a terror person before. And I, because I wanted to do this efficiently and systematically. So check, 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 check. And then I'm out of Makati and into Malate. Eventually, that took a toll on my relationship with my team. A team member once told me, don't treat me like one of your students. That shocked me. I thought I had good intentions. I believe I, I was trying to do my best a more efficient job I can for everyone. And yet, I got this. So eventually, I left the company. And although I can confidently say that it's not because of uh, subpar work, I regret to say, though, that it's largely because of strained relationships with my colleagues. I was not able to take time to take their perspectives. I, I did not join them and ask them or join them playing Call of Duty during break time, maybe. Uh, why they enjoyed taking meals together and what was taking them so long on their tasks at times. Looking back, I believe I committed two fatal mistakes. First is the common mistake of young faculty, young teachers, and young team leads. Being the sage of the stage, I was trying to prove to students and team members that, that just a few years younger that, hey, I know better. I was overcompensating, and uh, that meant that I slid too far away and I missed taking their perspective. And second, I spent too little time with them. You cannot take someone's perspective just through checklists and emails. It takes time together. It takes meals together, drinks together. It takes listening first. Now, Knowing, knowing how someone feels is different from feeling how that person feels. Now, uh, knowing how someone fit cognitive empathy, well, while some while feeling how someone feels is emotional empathy, and those two are not the same. When we try to just know how someone feels, we, we essentially we infer. We infer and uh, we, we rationalize. We just think about them, but it's, it's different when we feel how someone feels. And that brings me to my next topic, uh, point two of the four elements of, of empathy, withholding judgment. This brings me to the second element. We, we may know how someone feels, but I know that you know this. I know that you know this. Ang sarap mang judge ng tao. <laughs> I mean, it's a guilty pleasure. And yes, it's normal. It's human. 
there's a German word for it that I, I cannot pronounce, but it's part of an Avenue Q uh, playbill. But no, I don't think it's right. Judging people is not right, but it's, I, I guess it can be a natural thing to, to do. What essentially makes it easier, at least for me, to withhold judgment is developing emotional empathy. And emotional empathy is like catching a ball, but the ball is the emotion of someone else. You feel how others feel. So another story, another story of failure. So again, this, uh, this is during my time as a faculty. I was, uh, us I was in my usual teaching class, 6 to 9 p.m., when I saw one of my students sleeping. Ba? Teachers, may matutulog palagi. May natutulog na sudyante. That's normal. And I woke him up and asked him to wash his face. Silamos ka muna. He came back a little while later. And then later, tulog, tulog din naman siya. And then, oh, okay, I thought... Is the lesson boring? Boring ba ako magturo? And it spiraled to, binabasto siya ata ako nito ah. Okay? It escalated quickly in my head. Okay? See the lack of perspective taking there that happened there. And I believe that some of us really experienced that before. Again, I was young. I was tired from my day job. And I was overcompensating for my age. I wanted to show people that I know better. So, ang ginawa ko, I shouted at the student and asked him to step out of the room. And then after that, I continued the lesson and asked everyone to go on a break. And when, when I cooled down a bit, I asked the student to step in and we talked. Tinanong ko siya what the problem was, why he was always sleeping in class. And his answer uh, continues to haunt me to this day. He told me, sir, my dad died. We've been making funeral arrangements. I'm sorry. I was so embarrassed. I feel like I sinned big time. Parang minus one million ligtas points ako nung moment na yun. At that moment, I felt like I was the smallest person in the world. Until now, I feel bad that I wanted, that I want to tell this story as a cautionary, cautionary tale to everyone. So what happened is I apologized to the guy and asked him to, if he needed time. Now, I know how it feels to lose someone. I feel, I feel how he felt. Okay? If I just knew, I could have been kinder. But what could I do? I could have simply withheld judgment and talked to him if I just took his perspective. I guess Rick Jordan uh, articulated it well. And he wrote this. Don't judge someone until you do that is forged and work with this with this hammer. Meron talagang e e sa code. Okay? But if nakatayu tayo sa sapatos nila, if we if, if we've lived their lives, then maybe we can judge better. This brings me to my third element of empathy, according to Therese Wiseman, which is. Recognizing other people's emotions. So um, my career started with the visual art. So I'm more of a visual guy. So I like comparing emotions to, let's say, colors, but not through color psychology, but more of pointillism or pixel art. Okay. So we can see the colors, the browns, the grays, the blacks, but putting it together, to form and interpret them as figures is entirely different. I think it's similar with emotions. We can say that, hey, that's sadness in that guy. That's sadness. Eh. But to recognize that person is sad is entirely different. Understanding is different from knowing. And making the mistake of knowing for understanding can be very, very dangerous. Gano ka dangerous. So, another story. I think we all have friendships or relationships that we regret losing. Of course, ako, I have mine. And uh, again, this is a story of failure that I want to share with everyone. This is a, there is a very good, very good friend of mine several years ago. I will not give too much details because I don't want to reveal who this person is. Of course, yung privacy rin niya. But um, this is how it vaguely goes. 
we are very, very good friends. Bros talaga. Okay? For 10 years, we've been very great friends before an incident happened. This friend introduced me to date one of his team members, who is now my wife, okay? a few years ago. So a few years ago, my friend hala, unfriended me and my wife. Bigla na lang. We were so clueless as to what had happened that uh, what, what happened that triggered that unfriending. And yes, it was a big de- it's a big deal to us because we were very very close. Hindi to yung petty na oh unfriend ka lang naman ni. Eh. No, uh, uh, please hmm. withhold judgment. Take my perspective. Okay, so it was very important to us and nagula talaga kami na shock kami. And of course, it triggered negative feelings. Okay, on our end, because we thought, what did we do to deserve that? Now, going back to the third element of empathy, which is recognizing emotions, what we saw in my friend's action was anger. Galit ba siya sa amin? Bakit tayo inan friend? Bula naman paliwanag. But like pixel art or pointillism, when you see those colors, when you see those little snippets of emotions, you need the larger whole to understand the full picture, what the true emotions are. And uh, what we saw as anger, now looking back, looking at the fuller picture, I think the true emotion was sadness. My friend unfriended me and my wife when my wife had to resign from work due to back problems. They were very, very close. And um, my friend's interpretation of the resignation might have been very different. Probably, I caused, we caused him to be angry or magtampo. I took their teammate away from them. But my wife and my friend, they were very close. They were like siblings. It took a little time and understanding for us to recognize that maybe it was sadness that triggered the action, hindi galit. And if we recognize that early on, if we saw the, if, if we saw the fuller picture, not just the point of emotion, then the reaction would have been very different we essentially we, we paint different colors to paint the same pictures okay leading to the fourth element of empathy okay feeling ko pari na ako na nag seven last words okay so <laughs> the last element of empathy is communicating understanding so simply put empathy demands communication you cannot empathize without expressing your empathy with the other person. If empathy is sharing the emotions, you cannot share without telling the other person, uy, pa-share. If you don't, pag nanakaw yun, kinuha mo lang hindi mo sinasabi. On this end, I, have, I don't have a specific story to tell you, but let's, let's play an, imagine, an imagination game. Imagine tayo. Now, imagine yourself angry and hurt. If you're angry and hurt now, the better. But not really better, but the better. Hindi mo na ka mag-imagine, di ba? Now, imagine throwing that anger and the hurt at someone. If you have a seatmate, let's say punch that person sa, sa ano niya, bagong vaccine na balikan. Di ba? Don't do that. Okay? Or maybe fight that person. Or baka naman, you, you can just share with the other person as a sounding board. Okay? So imagine you're angry and then you will throw that anger at someone, awayin mo siya, or sounding board lang. Maybe via Zoom, or maybe let's say face-to-face with your family or your partner. Imagine you're throwing that pain to others. Now, imagine, di nila pinapansin. They don't respond. Wala. No response, no connection, no reciprocation, no return. Di ba mas masakit? Mas nakakainis. Nakaka... Ah, nakamute ako doon. Eh? We are soft-wired for connection and community. We need to be social and we need other people to respond to us. This is why communicating understanding is important. It's the last in the list, but it's definitely not the least. Before, uh, before Chris McCandle died, McCandles died, he wrote in the margins of a book that he left, that happiness is only real when shared. Yeah. I think it's not just happiness that's real when shared, it's emotions. 
if we do not share our emotions with people, we don't talk about it, in that same way, we don't partake in their emotions, then what we have is just delusion. We become judgmental to others. We don't get their perspectives. We don't listen to them. We don't have genuine listening because we do not share it. And by sharing means we give them, we give it to them and they take it from us. Happiness is only real when shared. Now you might be thinking, bakit puro responsibilidad ko to? Well, 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 well. The weight of empathy, I believe, rests on the person empathizing. You, ikaw yung nag-empathize. So, responsibilidad mo yun. So, how do we make it lighter for us to bear? We spread the load. We talk about empathy with other people. We educate them about empathy. What it takes to empathize that we can all share the load. So, the key takeaway, I, I hope, is not, wow, the TQ is so poor at maintaining relationships. I hope that's not a key takeaway. But that's okay. We're not perfect people and we're all navigating this wild, problematic, wonderful world as beginners. So to end my story, I'd like to borrow a quote from one of my favorite dinnerware. See? Si, si Plato. <laughs> favorite dinnerware ko. Okay. He said, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. Let's use our sadness to recognize other people's pains. Let's use our sadness as mirrors. Na, hey, I know that feeling. And let's never shy to tell them that we, that we feel with them. Otherwise, it's just empathy. It's not empathy, it's just delusion. And we cannot make strong connections with others. So that ends my presentation. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you po, Sir TQ. And thank you so much to, to um, Dr. Bustos for sharing your knowledge and experiences about, of course, sensitivity and empathy. Uh, kung paano makinig, uh, paano makiramay, at paano makiramay sa, pamagit, sa pamamagitan ng pakikinig. Ayan. Um, before we proceed to the discussion part, we would like to invite everyone to open their cameras for a group photo. Yeah, pakita naman po kayo. But yet again, um, this will be posted online. So if you're not comfortable, you may opt not to open your cameras. So our tech team will count for us. Ready na po ba tayo? Yeah, sige. Let's just keep on smiling. Uh, tech team will uh, count us in. Uh, if you're ready, tech team, please. Uh, All right. Right, so if you want to be seen, please keep smiling. So slide one. And next. Smile lang po. Smile. Empathy. Next. Say empathy. All right. Thank you. Okay. Salamat, Francis. All right. Yan. Yan po. Thank you very much, uh, Sir TQ and uh, Dr. Therese. Yan. So... Now, uh, I'd like to invite uh, our facilitator, uh, Mr. Jeremiah Adriano, uh, Inclusion Advocacy Unit Head of uh, Center for Inclusive Education, CIE, together with our guest speakers, uh, Dr. Therese Bustos and Mr. D.Q. Antoqueño, for some Q&A. Uh, thank you, LA. Thank you, KD. Hi, magandang hapon po sa lahat naman. Of course, Dr. Therese and Sir TQ, maraming salamat sa inyong pag-share. No? And yun, for, for participants, thank you rin sa pagpunta. And if you have questions, please lagay nyo lang sa chat. Siguro to start, um, I have this question for Dr. Therese. Teacher Therese, um, you, you focused on listening kasi kanina. No? And yeah. While, while discussing, ang, na, ang naisip ko na, ang pumapasok sa isip ko was yung kanta ng Ben and Ben, yung nakikinig ka ba sa akin. I think uh, nilabas na yun last year. No? Tapos ang first few lines nila oh, sa song ay, sasalubungin kita sa dulo ng yung galit. Hindi ko siya makanta. Alam niyo naman kung paano yung boses ko. Alam ni Dr. Therese yan. <laughs> Uh, uunawain kita para di tayo maging epidemya ang di matapos-tapos sugpuin. So, ang ganda lang na naisipin na 
tawag dito, papakinggan mo siya kapag hindi na siya galit. So based from your experience po no um and aside from from this this line from Ben uh from Ben and Ben's song do you have practical tips on how to genuinely listen to other people based from your experience po Okay um I guess yung question paano makinig kapag mahirap makinig um and especially uh, there was a question in the chat earlier so what do you do So, do you even spend time listening to politicians? Um, yes. Um, <laughs> diba? Jude Latour, the question na yun. Yes. <laughs> yes, do you even spend time listening to them? Uh, first of all, I mean, seriously, I have learned that breathing, controlling your breathing, as in, really helps. Uh, because there are automatic responses, especially when people start saying things that they don't even know about. And so that really irritates me. And of course, when you're at home, it's easy to like blurt it out. But when you're in public, when you're in a meeting, that's the last thing that you want to do, or that, that you should do, you, you know. And so what would I typically do? do? I would breathe. Talagang deep, well, medyo conscious na breathing. It's the same breathing that you do uh, when you want to sleep. <laughs> yung, yung regularity na yun. Because that really helps. Um, may mga iba sinasabi nila, tama nga ba? Four seconds, you breathe, keep it for seven, and then release it for eight. So may mga ganyan akong formula in my head, especially when I am in very difficult situations, um, when we're negotiating, especially in um, conflict-ridden situations. I really practice uh, deep breathing. I also pray. So I pray that everything turns out well. Um, and I guess if, if there is anything that I would have to do this for, is especially with family members, because with people you don't know, you tend to be you know you tend to be more gracious to them. You know, you give them a bit of leeway. But when it's a family member who tells you something that you don't want to hear, there's this tendency to just like uh, you know cut them off. And so, yun, nakakatulong talaga ang pagbibilang. <laughs> um, um, yeah, yun yung aking practical advice. Huminga ng malalim, magbilang. So, yun. Um, Sir Therese, paano naman yun sa question ni Atty. Jude Latore? Will it be worth listening to other people who are de- uh, deliberately lying or selfish slash deceptive like some politicians? Um, ako personally, I would listen to them to be able to strategize. Uh, I would listen to what they say. And of course, you would always see that the, what is being said is not, uh, parang the actions do not match the words that are being said. And so, rather than, kasi syempre, like, Seriously, when I have difficulty listening and, and you know that there's a pattern, na paulit-ulit naman, yan. So I will really choose to not to listen. Talagang, kasi alam mo naman yon. but you, you make that choice. I think after giving that person or whoever that is several chances, di ba? Di ba, in fact, and this is, I guess, the reason why we all feel so frustrated. Uh, Because we've given people so many chances already to explain themselves, to, well, at least to be more logical with, with the things that they do. Pero pag sobra na, ang tagal na naman talaga. But then what I'm saying is, um, then use your energy to be more proactive instead of, because there's always this... Um, We can put our energy in commenting, saying something. And, and I'm not saying that people shouldn't do that because some people would really have to respond immediately, like shout, etc., magmarcha, etc. Pero that, siguro because I'm old already and I know that I only have limited energy, I will put my energy in things that matter. And so I will not put it in uh, commenting, uh, Like making myself sit through a pressure only to get angry. So I will use my energy 
hahanapin ko na lang. So I would my example there would be Patricia noon. Kasi I mean, yung sa kanya was a proactive response to to all that's being said. You know, instead of like saying hindi naman totoo yung mga pinagsasabi niya, mag-isip ka na lang ng plano na iba. And so ako naman, let's give people a chance. Kaso di ba parang limang taon na eh. Tagal. So, yun. <laughs> yun ang ibig ko sabihin. So, there comes a point where you stop listening and you just use your energy to do something more proactive that could help others. Thank you po, Teacher Therese. Um, Sir TQ, uh, long time, long time. Nakakamiss. Uh, si Sir TQ, nakasama ko pa siya sa last day bago mag-suspend ng one week na more than a year na. No? Tagal mag- one week na suspension. So, thank you. Um, I have a question for you naman. Um, mm. Ang number four mo kanina was communication and I want to focus on that. For me, isa yung sa mga importanteng bagay kasi yes, we can empathize pero minsan nagbabago yung nagbabago yung dating sa ibang tao kapag kinocommunicate na natin. Parang yes, naiintindihan natin sila or nararamdaman natin kung ano yung nararamdaman nila pero kung natin din yung deliver both through actions and uh, communi- uh, tawag dito, verbal and non-verbal communications. Iba pa rin eh. So from your experience, sir, uh, ano yung mga tips na mabibigay ninyo para maayos yung communication natin? Both verbal and non-verbal. Hmm, actually mahirap. Sobrang hirap nun ha. Tips. Uh, well, for, for first of all, um, in terms of communication, kasi if you, sige, let's I'll put on the communication design hat on, because we have to communicate that we can empathize with others. So again, let, let's put that hat on. In in communication design, and it doesn't just mean na meron kang meron kang poster or banner or meron kang social media post, etc. It's kind of talking the language. Uh, it means changing your approach always and uh, parang changing it until it is the most understandable version of the message that you want to tell. So, if that's the case kasi, we just have to be number one, patient with others. That maybe uh, maybe the way that I'm speaking to them is not something that it's, it doesn't register to them. Wala silang decoder para sa encoder na binigay ko sa kanila. We have to be patient with them. And then, uh, I will hark back to kay, kay Teacher Therese naman na, I mean, we have to really listen to them. We have to be, we have to genuinely listen to them uh, because if you are designing, if you're, if you're trying to design the way you communicate to them, then genuine listening is important because that will feed into how you will revise your way of communication. So it, it seems technical, but basically, makinig ka, be patient with them, and then baguhin mo yung paraan mo ng pagkausap sa kanila. And then second, also be patient with yourself. Uh, madalas makalimutan na maging patient sa sarili about these things na wala, pagka, pagka hindi nila naintindihan yung sasabi mo, wala, wala na akong kwenta. Hindi, hindi naman ganun. Kasi minsan talagang, we we all come from different standpoints we all have we all come from different points of view and uh, we all are we all were shaped to communicate differently for example hindi ako ganito magsalita dati uh, shout out kay miss i mean na nagchat sa akin teacher ko from grade 6 ayan dito siya sabi niya sabi ni miss i mean sa kan kanina hello thank you <laughs> Hi, Miss Ivy. I'm surprised. Now you're talking. You used to be very reserved and quiet. I'm so happy. <laughs> Accelerated guy and very smart. Okay, thank pare, you. Pareho, 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 parang, <laughs> parang kahapon 20 lang. years ago. <laughs> thank you. Kung oh, ano. <laughs> Yun. So sabi niya, I was very reserved, very quiet before. But, I mean, magbabago tayo ng paraan ng pagsalita as we go through life. As, uh, as stones are thrown at us and, and uh, chips away parts of us, it shapes us. And sometimes the way you are shaped doesn't exactly fit how others are shaped. We don't fit together. That's why you have to be, you have to be patient with yourself as well. So yun lang, mapa, yun lang mapapaya ko. Be patient with others, but be patient with yourself as well. 
Kasi it's a process. Communication is a process. Thank you, Sir TQ. No? Um, so let me read some questions from from our guests. No? First is, ayaw niya sabihin yung name niya, pero what is the difference between empathy and sympathy? I think kay Sir TQ to. Thank you. Sorry, uminom ako ng tubig sa aking water jug. Well, okay, I'm okay. so sorry. Yes, um, hindi sinabi kung sino nagtanong eh. Pero what's the mm-hmm. difference between empathy and sympathy? Ah, okay. May YouTube video about that. No? Si Brene Brown. Si empathy and sympathy. Empathy and sympathy. But uh, Brene Brown frames it na sympathy drives disconnection and empathy drives connection. Kasi when we say sympathy, what usually happens is you put yourself above the person or having a better situation over the other person. Kaya ka nakikisimpat siya. Whereas empathy is you are with that person. You are with that person in that hole, in that pit. So yun. So in a nutshell, you know the difference between sympathy and empathy. Uh, whereas ang um, empathy, we call it pakikiramay. Uh, sympathy, usually it's uh, awa or, or habag. Nahahabag ka. So, minsan mas madaling intindihin pagka Filipino. Pero pag nahahabag ka, sabihin, you are in a, in a better situation than the other person, kaya ka nahahabag or naaawa. Whereas, uh, that's sympathy. Pagka you empathize, you are there with them. Okay. Thank you, uh, Sir Tiki. No? Uh, this question is from Sir Edgar Timbungko. Um, it's addressed to Teacher Therese. Uh, what does to extend grace mean? So, siguro to extend grace, first of all, uh, that would be, number one, to give the person the benefit of the doubt. Yun, yan yung mga parang feeling mo, ako ba'y niloloko nito? Naglalay naman to ah. Hindi, de, de, sige. Um, you, you know, you, you give the person the benefit of the doubt. Malamang totoo yung sinasabi niya. Parang he has not given me reason to, to think that he's really lying or she's lying. Um... Yung kortesiya, yun. Pero I think, to me, that's what it really means. Giving the person the benefit of the doubt. You know, not, not judging first. Uh, when you're so tempted to do it. Uh, being polite. Yung, yung magalang ka pa rin. Kahit na feeling mo, gusto mo na siyang sakalin. Gusto mo na siyang siluan. So, yun. Yun yung extending grace. Uh, thank you, thank you, Teacher Therese. Um, Sir Tiki, do, do you want to add something don sa extending grace? Kasi uh, I think natakel din siya. Eh. Yung yung two uh, yung two topics kasi nag-intertwine talaga siya. Mayroon kayong gusto ng idagdag, Sir Tiki? Wala. Let joke lang. <laughs> well, natingin ko kasi if we believe that everyone deserves to a voice, regardless kung gano'ng kamali yan, uh, then we will extend grace. Kasi, uh, I think we stop extending grace if we believe, we, or, or we stop believing, hey, that guy, wala na siya, wala na siyang deserve magsalita, puro fake news ang sinishare niyan. Ano yan? Radicalism, etc. Wala na siyang, he doesn't deserve a voice anymore. That's when we stop really ex- <laughs> extending grace. But, in, I think research shows naman eh, na sometimes, yung, as, as I also mentioned, na pagka, sometimes we misinterpret some actions as, as different emotions or we encode some of our emotions differently. Na ang, minsan yung, yung, yung takot, translate to violence. Yung fear of one's own life, translate siya na, hey, gusto ko ng someone violent. So sometimes we have to understand also na siya, saan gagaling? Kasi minsan iba, iba yung pagkaka-encode. And if we if we are great uh, if we give grace no or pakinggan natin siya, give them a chance to be listened to. Then we can really understand ito talaga sinasabi niya. And ang daming and daming sources that, that that says that. Now we just need to give them a chance kasi minsan iba lang sinasabi niya. Thank you sure Tiki. Uh, gusto ko lang i-highlight yung nabanggit niyo no na tawag dito. 
what if yun niya pa ulit-ulit na parang mali yung sinasabi niya or parang napapansin mo puro fake news. I think na sabi rin to ni, ni Teacher Therese kanina about yung politicians at saka yung actions nila. Pero do you draw a line or kung kung nagdo-draw ka ng line, kailan sa pag-extend ng grace mo sa pakikinig? Uh, so si for Teacher Therese and for Sir T.Q. Toa. Ah. Na nag-guess niyo yung question. No? Kung baga, if hanggang saan yung draw, yung, sorry, hanggang saan yung pag-extend mo ng days for those people na sa tingin niyo ay hindi naman masyadong legitimate yung sinasabi or parang hindi naman ganun ka-okay yung sinasabi nila mm-hmm. para sa inyo. Para sa inyo. I can, I, I can answer first though. No, ito, uh, caveat lang. No? This answer is not uh, anymore based on like any research or ano. But this is purely ano, out of my own uh, ano na to, uh, own limitations na to. Uh, I've, made, uh, I've made this own uh, limit to myself. If nagawa na ako ng masama because of this, then I'll stop. Uh, I mean, We also have to. Uh, I think we also have to understand that we are not perfect. We are not empaths. May limitations tayo. And if if ano na, if this is causing me to let's say to sin or to do bad things already or to to cause harm, then you know limit ko. I will stop talking. I will stop listening. I will, at least ako, I I will let that that person na uh, live live his reality na muna. Because uh, yun nga. We have to understand that tao lang din naman tayo. And that's my own limitations I put to myself. Uh, Dr. Theris? Ako, I would agree with what Sir TQ said. Um, pag nagkakamali na ako, dahil, ay, kasi di ba halimbawa, nanonood ka, tapos talagang galit na galit. Kasi talaga naman, di ba nakakagalit? Galit na galit na. I mean, you know, it's time to turn off that television set. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, There's no point um yun nga and in what he said but pag nagsisin ka na galit galit ka na nga <laughs> uh, stop na and then kasi ako naman I I would think about it in terms of let's say utang and I know I I'm digressing um magpautang ka ng kaya mong mawala na hindi na babalik so in the same way I would give you the same amount of attention to the point that I'm parang willingly I'm giving you that amount of time for you to use, for you to explain your thoughts. But definitely, there's also a limitation. Uh, sometimes it's a limitation on um, other, other responsibilities that also need your time. And so that would have, those would have to be attended to also. And so in a way, Like the the limits also are not just parang plain hypothetical limits, no. There are really other things that go on in our lives that do not give us the luxury of listening to someone. Alimbawa, yun nga. If I will just sit and listen, and there are other things that need my attention, then I have to pay attention to those things also. So, but sometimes I would really listen with the intention to strategize. Mm-hmm. Oo. Yung kasi nga, you know, if there is some if I am if there's a problem that needs to be solved. And sometimes you can't help but work with obnoxious people. But mm-hmm. sometimes you just have to listen because eventually from the mouth of that same person will you will find the solution. <laughs> And so titiisin mo 'yon. And so it's really very difficult. I guess it's the purpose that you have set for yourself. But first, you know, we just need to give people a chance to be heard. Um, you know, but then that also means that you need to be very, in a way, secure in yourself. Kasi nga, usually, pag ayaw mo na silang marine, kasi nga, uh, they're touching something sensitive, I guess. And one way to address that is not so much to switch off that person, but to take care of that thing 
that that person triggers. Yun. I don't know kung maliwanag ba yun. Sige po. Thank you po, uh, Teacher Delisa and Sir T.T. No? Uh, a follow-up question uh, related din dito. No? Uh, question from Ms. Isay Agnes. How do you safeguard yourself from being used and abused for being too empathic? Hirap oh. nun. Mm, paano? <laughs> Pero, act- <laughs> Pero alam mo ako, uh, same response ko kanina. Kasi, wait lang. Medyo na to ha, medyo different topic to ha, but uh, I, I'm, I think I can relate it to this one. Nung, nung high school ako, may tinuro sa amin. Yung parang elements daw of sin, paano, how can you judge na nagkakasala ka na? Sinabi sa amin, may isa, which is intention, and then yung pangalawa, action, and then pangatlo, like uh, impact. So, intention, may intention ka ba? Pangalawa, kinumit mo ba? Pangatlo, may nangyari ba? So I think I can apply that also dun sa tanong na yun, sa sagot na yun, sa tanong na yun. Na number one, sige, you're being used because you're being too empathic. Ngayon, do you intend to to cause harm to yourself or to others? Pangalawa, has your empathy actually caused harm to others? Pangalawa, because of your empathy ba? Pangatlo, is have you, because of your empathy, uh, nakapag-cause ka ba uh, regardless na sa jam or hindi? So ganun din for me, I, I guess, uh, which I also apply to myself kasi nag- Medyo na imbibe ko na kasi yung tatlong ano na yun, tatlong standards na yun. So uh, minsan sinasurface surface ko lang siya but I don't really think about it anymore. If being too empathic is causing me to cause harm to myself or to others, then I stop myself from from empathizing. Again, tao, tao lang naman tayo. We are not expected to be empath na 100%. I think I think naman. Okay. Thank you sir TQ. Um Teacher I think, uh, you know, that is a difficult question to answer because I am not an empath. Uh, I have a tendency to be dense. And that's, way, and that's the reason why I need to pay attention and I need to listen. Because I have a tendency to be dense. Um, and the way I understand it, empaths cannot help themselves. They feel strongly about things. Kaya ako parang I, I, I feel that I'm not in a position to talk about them because I am not in that position where parang ano nga eh, so somebody described it as para silang laging nasa ano, parang in constant osmosis. Yung di ba you le, you're able to so, to let things through? Eh ako naman medyo hindi kay laging in may medyo cognitive ako lagi it has to be intentional kasi nga meron akong tendency to be dense so you know i don't really know how to answer that kasi how do you prevent yourself and protect yourself when your makeup your current makeup is really like a porous substance di ba yung di ba parang naisip ko yung mga science experiments dati na yung ano ba yung itlog di ba ang nipis nipis no membrane na yun kapatos yung tubig papasok and how do you protect yourself when you are created that way so I don't really know maybe a, a, a psychologist among us can answer that question better yeah thank you po uh, Teacher Therese thank you po sa pag-share uh, another question from uh, Sir Edgar then ulit How do we share our burdens with others in a way that will not unnecessarily burden them? So kanina no, papunta sa atin, uh, paano tayo tatanggap ng ng concerns ng ibang tao? Ngayon naman, paano tayo yung magshi-share na hindi naman makaka-burden sa kanila? Ang okay, hindi sino po pwedeng <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we we'll let Sir TQ answer first. Yes. Sir TQ. Um, yeah. And next question. Na joke lang. Uh, <laughs> alam mo, at the top of my head, it's really about your contract with another person. 
ano ba yung pag-usapan nyo? And uh, yung setting limitations also. And then, kasi sometimes we, sometimes ang contract natin with other people is we share, pero does it mean na na may gagawin ka about it? Yeah. Yung wife ko nga pala, may sinasabi siya, ano ba gusto mo sabihin ko? Yung gusto mo lang marinig o gusto mo yung totoo? <laughs> so, yun. So, when we share that, or when we share our stuff with other people, I think we, it, also, it also has to be clear to us what we want to get in return. Kasi kung sinagot ka, kumanda ka sa sagot. But yun lang din naman. Uh, it's, I think it's your contract with other people. What you want to get by communicating your maybe your, your burden to other people. Okay. Um, typically, um, I will share my burden with someone who will not be affected by the situation. Yeah. So, for example, bawa, I feel like quitting my job. <laughs> But the last thing you want to tell that to is someone who's dependent on you for allowance, for rent, for, for all of those things. You don't share such information with them. And so this is where counselors, I think, are very important, therapists, even the ones, yung, the peer counselors that we have in our universities. Diba? Because usually, it's good to be sharing to someone Kasi it's easier to withhold judgment when you don't really know the person. <laughs> diba? And I, I found myself in the past you want, needing the help of a professional to, to help me sort out things in my head. Because if, for example, I will share the same concerns with my mother, di syempre magwawala na yun. Or I will share my concerns with a colleague who might be affected if I resign. So, and so that has been, well, at least personally, that is what typically happens to me. I share my burden with someone who, who is not, who will not gain or be affected by the situation because that person more or less will be more objective and I will not be giving undue burden to someone by unloading to that person who knows me. Yun. Um, thank you po uh, sa inyong dalawa. We have a question na gustong siya yung mismo mag, magtanong. Um, Alright. Uh, I'd like to call on Ms. Janet. Uh, Ms. Janet, uh, if you can uh, unmute yourself, you can ask your question. Yeah. So, uh, my question is... Oh, sorry, let me repeat that. So, for example, there's a person na who always judge other people. Uh, but parang they're very, parang I am quite suspicious of this person na I don't trust the person. Uh, how do you, parang I, I know it's difficult. Like for example, sa nasa isang group kami, tapos parang lagi siyang nagagalit, tapos walang, wala nang nagko-contribute sa discussion. So I'm not really sure how to approach that person kasi sometimes I don't understand them. Parang, um, the discussion is not enough. Parang ha- we are not solving it well enough. And I keep going back and forth to my other groupmates and we cannot really solve the problem. So do we just leave the person alone? Or uh, bahala na siya? <laughs> so this is a classmate, a co-worker. Or a co-worker? Like, uh, pwede pong classmate or in general siguro for any other person. Parang if the person keeps if the person keeps being judged or because hindi nga totoo yung mga sinasabi niya, how do we approach that person? Are you required to deal with that person? you're forced to, to deal with that person. Kailangan kasi in order for us to complete mm. our task, uh, our project, mm. sometimes it gets too tiring. Uh, Nade-delay kami because of that person uh, with the project. So, so there's parang nagiging magulo. We try to give them benefit of the doubt, but sometimes 
sobra na parang it's too much for me uh, based on ano based on on the conflict management materials that uh, I read when I was doing my thesis um well we can empathize but at the same time to resolve conflict sometimes uh, we have to find the the correct people to uh, to to talk to so as teacher 3 said a while ago sometimes we have to get people or approach people who have no stake in on the problem or on the on the burden so let's say in this case maybe your 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 superior your boss or your teacher so it helps during that time to to resolve those conflicts but it doesn't mean that you don't empathize or you're not sensitive in my opinion you don't you don't you're not sensitive about that person it just means that you have to resolve some some conflicts but there are ways to resolve it amicably or positively and uh, you do that by talking to the correct people that can mediate Um, if this is at the workplace, most likely the supervisor, and especially if it's affecting already the output of the team, your supervisor most likely will know and will have to intervene. Uh, because there are really occasions when it's difficult to resolve it at your level, especially if, for example, you're all uh, of the same position. <laughs> And um, so people tend, well, at least no, people would tend to listen to the, the one higher. Pero hindi naman, no, hindi naman isumbong, hindi ganyan. Pero, but definitely when, when the whole uh, team's reputation already is at stake, then it will, you, the group leader, the supervisor will have to intervene. Otherwise, uh, you know, giving concessions to that one person might affect the entire group. So you really have to weigh your options. Um, yes, we extend grace, but you also have to determine, so what are your deliverables as a team? Maybe uh, I agree with Sir TQ that we need to talk to the person first. Then we talk to somebody who can probably fix that situation, help with the situation. But but maybe there's also um, a possibility that there's, uh, for example, di ba yung, if you look at your team as people on the bus, sometimes maybe that person should not be on that bus or, or should not be in that team. And so you will have to think about it if you're the group leader or if the, su the supervisor may have to think about uh, that person too in relation to his or her role in terms of uh, group deliverables. So you really just have to balance it. You need to weigh, it, weigh your options. Uh, just to, just a follow-up question. So, so Sige, we can sometimes siguro, uh, because if you don't understand the person, baka tabayan man natin siya for a while, uh, let them work on their own first, or parang if they are distracting the team already, let's try to parang work individually first, and then later, siguro. If, if medyo okay-okay na, we can go back to the person, and baka mamaya ma-realize natin na they are better working independently. <laughs> so, So if we can really, parang if it's impossible to have a conversation with somebody because they tend to parang brand you negatively if you try to talk to them, mm. parang like share ka lang naman, tapos iba yung magiging perspective nila. Sometimes ako, I just let them. To me, I think what is... Kailangan mong isipin, what is your, what's your picture of success? What does success look like? Does success look like you disengaging with that person? Does success look like you working together with that person? Does success look like you becoming friends again? 
or does success look like just finishing the task? And then you work towards that, uh, that picture of success because those are, you have to make key decisions uh, papunta doon sa picture of success na yon. And sometimes, uh, iba-iba yung, yung ways towards that picture of success. And sometimes, if the picture of success is uh, making being friends again, then you have to make some, that naman yung may costs that you have to pay because you want that benefit. So, I think, picture your, ano, uh, what's your picture of success first? And then make those make those decisions, make those empathic, sensitive decisions that will lead you towards that picture of success. But you cannot resolve something if you don't know what success looks like. Thank you. Thank you. Yan. Thank you very much, no? Uh, Miss Janet, thank you very much sa question nyo. Uh, so, nasa last stretch na tayo ng questions. Siguro, ano, um, Teacher 3 and Sir TQ, is it okay for you to share your uh, tawag dito, email addresses in case na meron pang gustong magtanong? Pero since kulang na tayo ng oras, no, baka pwede i-email na lang sa inyo? Okay lang ba? Sure, I'll chat yeah. my email address the chat box. Okay. Sige, please. Um, so, yun, sa so mga merong questions pa, pero hindi na nakapagtanong. Sorry, uh, medyo nakinulang tayo ng oras, pero there, uh, Teacher Therese and Sir TQ will share their email addresses sa chat box. If you have questions, go down. Siguro, bilang pagtatapos, no? Uh, for, bo both for Teacher Therese and Sir TQ. Ano yung, ano yung mga gusto nyo pang i-share? Or any Final words, closing remarks para para dito sa araw natin. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll answer by answering also the question of Emiko. Um, can, can you really teach empathy? You know, I think you can. Especially with children. <laughs> and, and we do it uh, using literature, limbawa pag binasahan mo yung bata, um, you, you try to help the child understand what's going on in a story. And you try to, uh, you ask the child, so, so what do you think is the reason behind certain actions in the story? And I would say that you can do it also with your friend. Maybe not the story, but you can... Uh, use a movie that you both enjoy. You can talk about the movie. Uh, and you can, instead of telling your friend, you, know, you need to be more empathetic. Uh, the last thing we want to hear from our friends is sermon, di ba? Uh, friend mo nga sila, huwag naman magsisermon. But you can teach people uh, ways of learning, you know. You can teach people how to be empathetic by maybe choosing an activity that you can do together, like a movie that you can watch. And then you can talk about the movie. Personally, um, I'm not like that. <laughs> tapos na movie, tapos na movie. But if you feel the need for an, a venue for discussing and uh, learning more about empathy, yeah, watch a movie with a friend and talk about the movie. Uh, yon. And then ask questions. There are some people who who learn more when they see other people's situation more than talking about their personal situation. So you may want to use the third person, your parang third person view to look at the situation to teach empathy to your friend <laughs> in a non-sermon manner. So yun po. Thank you, teacher Therese. Uh, Sir Tiki? I'm, I'm trying to find the correct term no but uh, sige uh, maybe ang huli ko na lang sabihin i'd like to connect to what teacher three said na using literature uh, to teach empathy and uh, maybe magada ko dun sa answer dun sa can we teach empathy actually we don't have to teach empathy we have to teach unlearning empathy um from the days from the day we were born empath em empathic naman tayo that's why we have those 
that's yun yun na lang term eh na uh, uh, infant empath empathy when babies cry when they hear other babies cry and then through the course of our uh, growing up uh, shaping uh, share or put uh, parang passing on worldviews and from different maybe modes of education education at home uh, systematic industrial revolution uh, era education we lose empathy and that's why uh, stories movies books literature so useful so strong in teaching empathy because they're not they're not teaching <laughs> they're not teaching tools they're entertainment tools uh, they get into our psyches deeper and more efficiently because we are storytellers naturally we're social uh, individuals and we listen to stories we absorb stories better than we absorb lessons and uh, that's what maybe yun yung gusto kong i-share na panghuli na what we have to do is unlearn unlearning un or unteaching empathy we have to stop saying na ganito kami nung araw dapat nah nahirapan kami dapat mahirapan din kayo we have to stop saying that and teaching that to to other people and uh, we have to just start connecting with people asking them how they feel why they feel that and uh, and uh, that's basically the start of unlearning uh, unlearning and teaching empathy and uh, basically just enriching the em the empathic capabilities we currently have well, we already have thank you and thank you, uh, Teacher Therese and Sir TQ. Maraming maraming salamat uh, sa pag-share ninyo. Sa mga nagtanong, thank you. Once again, sorry sa mga hindi na namin natanong. Please do email Sir TQ and Teacher Therese for, for more questions. Tapos, um, LA and KD, take it away. Yan. Sige po, ayan. Uh, pasensya na po at uh, doon sa mga hindi nakapagtanong pe, uh, pero maraming maraming salamat po teacher Therese and uh, sir TQ for for sharing uh, for sharing your experiences and all the and all your uh, knowledge yan uh, so before we end uh, i'd like to invite uh, Norley Araral advocacy coordinator of HiFi and again uh, back to the stage uh, Jemai Adriano uh, advocacy unit head of uh, of CIE to present certificates of uh, appreciation to uh, Sir TQ and Dr. Therese and to wrap us up this uh, this uh, afternoon, mag evening na. Yan. So, Noli, Jemai. Thanks, Jale. So, bumalik lang pala ako that hindi na ako malis kanina. So, yun, once again, Teacher Therese and Sir TQ, maraming salamat. So, on behalf of Benilian Student Envoys, Peter D. Garucho, Innovation Institute, Hub of Innovation for Inclusion, and Center for Inclusive Education, the Certificate of Appreciation is, is presented to Dr. Therese Bustos. Mr. Mark Antiqueño, sorry, na late. For sharing his expertise at the Sensitivity Empathy Webinar this May 21, 2021. Signed by Tricia Rey Astoriano, Manager for External Affairs, Benildian Student Envoys. Francisco Moreno, Jr., the Director of the Hub of Innovation for Inclusion. And Maria Veronica Templo Perez, Director of the Center for Inclusive Education. So again, thank you, thank you. Thank you po sa inyong dalawa. So yun, to wrap this up, um, TQ, paano ba natin ito tatapusin? Nolly. Uh, I'm sorry, TQ. Nolly, paano natin ito tatapusin? Okay lang. Ako gusto ko lang mag-hi kay TQ and mag-thank you kay Dr. Therese no, for everything that we've learned. Um, ang dami kong dami gusto kong i-save mamaya yung uh, text file no dami kong natutunan um, especially yung listening kay Dr. Therese at yung kay TQ naman yung communication and of course uh, I'd like to thank you Jemai and everyone for sharing the load uh, with us in learning how to be more sensitive uh, and to empathize and even unlearning ano so uh, ikaw Jemai ano mga takeaways mo Thank you, uh, Nolz. No? Siguro to share a little bit, this event is very special para sa amin kay CIE and kay HiFi kasi fifth year na namin. Uh, this week, nag-celebrate kami ng five years sa Benild na working together. So, for the past five years, CIE and HiFi has been pushing or um, 
tawag dito, teaching the Binilan community kung paano maging sensitive and innovative. And yung sens- sensitivity and empathy, yun yung two key uh, elements para maging innovative and inclusive kay. So, sobrang important nito para sa amin. Tapos, I want to highlight ng mga sinabi ni, ni Teacher Therese and ni Sir TQ kanina na you have to listen. Definitely listen genuinely, hindi lang yung basta makikinig ka. No? Para makapag-empathize ka rin and para maging sensitive ka. Tapos, put your yourself sa shoes ng ibang tao and of course, communicate it or co- communicate with them properly. Pero at the same time, you have to set limits kasi minsan naabuso tayo. So yun, thank you once again Sir TQ and uh, Teacher Therese. And of course, sa inyo, sa mga nanood at saka, lalo na yung nag-interact sa chat, sobrang ganda ng interaction ninyo. Thank you everyone. Na buhay na buhay yung chat. Very engaged. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, So yun, um, LA and KD, take it away again. Salamat Sir Jemai, Sir Nolly. So yan, once again, we would like to very, very, a very big thank you to Teacher Therese and Sir TQ for, for sharing their expertise, their knowledge, their stories, personal stories uh, on sensitivity and uh, empathy, you know. Uh, I hope we can take some of these and and apply it in our you know, in our work from home places and maybe our virtual classes for the students here. So, salamat. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat po ulit sa lahat. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you.